So the characters were uh, created back when I was in high school, and um, I uh, really just made them up because I thought it would be really cool to have red hair, so I kept on having these female characters with red hair. Um, Jamie was nothing like what she is now, but uh, Hazel was the curmudgeon that she uh, she continued to become afterwards. Um, so back then it was called Hazelnuts. Uh, after college I decided to restart the characters and um, bring them back and uh, um, started a, a comic strip called Girls with Slingshots. The name is, you know, doesn't really, it doesn't have anything to do with slingshots, but it has a lot of girls in it. <laughs> and um, there's also a talking cactus. We decided to add to the mix and a few, uh, a few male characters that um, remind me of people in my life. So they're all, you know, the good guys. They're all these, these female friendly kind of, you know, interesting uh, personality full guys. I guess. So it's all character driven. Um, I keep on adding more characters. It, it's kind of overwhelming how many people we have in there now. But they all have their own stories, they all have their own personalities, and um, we have a few cats in there <laughs> for the cat lovers. And a lot of alcohol, generally. <laughs> so it's kind of that, um, it focuses on that period between uh, college and when you finally get your career. And unfortunately for most of these characters, they have not gotten their careers yet because I guess I'm kind of mean to them. But uh, I think they might actually always be stuck in this limbo in between. Oh, and I still um, hand letter, which is kind of rare because a lot of uh, cartoonists these days, even the syndicated ones, are doing uh, different fonts instead. Mm -hmm. But I like being able to sell the originals with a story in it. It takes about, um, oh there we go, there's another tidbit. It takes about two hours for me to do each strip. From start to finish, or? Mm -hmm. okay. um, as long as it's been scripted beforehand. So why don't you, I guess you can kind of walk through the process of... Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. Um, so what I'll do first is go through, and uh, I didn't do it this time, but, um, you know, I've got these pre-printed uh, templates that I do myself. It's a non-copy blue, so it won't copy when I, when I scan it in. Um, I will measure off the gutters uh, for the panels. Usually it's four panels. And then I'll uh, letter it first, um, because I feel like the letter... I think I need to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the lettering uh, needs to be consistent while the artwork can really be worked around it. So you usually letter everything out first and then just place the characters and uh, start filling them in. Um, after I have everything penciled out, I'll use a pen and I use, um, I use mostly Pentel products because they're just really fantastic. I don't even plan to do that, but I have a, a plastic uh, fountain pen that's a disposable one um, that I work that I have to buy online. Um, I can't find them anywhere else. And uh, they have like a really nice uh, line thickness to them. Uh, you can change the line quality really easily. So I'll use uh, microns for the, uh, uh, for the lettering, so I have a really consistent line for that. Um, the Pentel pens for the inking. And then I'll scan everything over. Um, and they're huge, they're like 7 by 17, something like that. I've been working a lot larger lately. Um, scan everything in. I have a pretty nice size scanner. Uh, scan it in a bitmap, which means just black and white uh, pixels, 600 dpi, so it's huge. And then um, all the grayscales I do in Photoshop with a Wacom tablet. Okay. 